Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. Today, we are reading some poems from the ancient poet Rumi. But before we get into that, let's roll up and I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm smoking. I am smoking a type one joint today. Type 1 refers to the chemotype of the weed, which refers to the dominant cannabinoid in the weed. Today, I am smoking on a strain called Honey Banana Refuel, and it is a type 1 strain. Whoopsies. It has 25% THC and less than 1% CBD. And this strain smells absolutely incredible, like earthy and fruity. It is incredibly aromatic and surprisingly, it tastes as aromatic as it smells. It's not uncommon to come across very aromatic strains that don't end up tasting nearly as strong as they smell. But this one, oh my goodness. It is delicious. It is smooth to smoke and it is a lovely, pleasant, functional high, which is good because I have some work to do after this. You may hear or see some buzzing around me. I have, (laughs) I think it's a wasp. Could be a hornet. Um, I don't really know the difference. I just know that they're mean and they don't die when they sting you. (laughs) This one has been following me around as I've been trying to set up for this. <laughs> and, you know, I keep reminding myself that just because he's flying around me doesn't mean he wants to attack me. And I am really trying not to kill him because I know once you kill one of these, more will arrive. They like follow, I don't know if it's the, the scent or something of, of the dead bugs, but once you kill one of these, you can get more. So I am trying to let him go about his business, although he is going about his business very close to my business. <laughs> Not crazy about that. There we go. She's not the prettiest joint in the world, but God damn it, she'll do. So we are reading some poems today from the poet Rumi, who was a poet in the 13th century, 1200s Persia. His poems were translated into English in this book by a man named Coleman Barks. And despite how old Rumi is, my goodness, stay still. Despite how old Rumi and his works are, they are still very popular with poetry lovers today. His poems are short, sweet, to the point, a little bit funny, and often very poignant. There is a large spiritual undertone to Rumi's poems, um, usually connected to a higher power, oftentimes in nature. Mary Oliver took a lot of inspiration from Rumi, and you'll find very similar spiritual undertones in her poems as well. So now let's light this up. I understand that smoke keeps the wasps away, so hopefully that will keep him from buzzing around me. Mmm. This hits beautifully. It's a little weak at the tip, but that's all right. I am filming this in the woods of Mississippi, just north of the Gulf Coast. And if you have never been to the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, I encourage you to consider it. It is stunningly beautiful. I have met some of the friendliest people that I have met in the entire van trip down here. And I'm having a blast in Mississippi. But we're not here for... (laughs) 
tourism promotion special on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. We're here to smoke some weed and read some poems. So let's get into it. Our first poem today is called Say Yes Quickly. Forget your life. Say God is great. Get up. You think you know what time it is. It's time to pray. You've carved so many little figurines, too many. Don't knock on any random door like a beggar. Reach your long hand out to another door. Beyond where you go on the street, the street where everyone says, how are you? And no one says, how aren't you? Tomorrow, tomorrow you'll see what you've broken and torn tonight, thrashing in the dark. Inside you, there's an artist you don't know about. He's not interested in how things look different in moonlight. If you're here unfaithfully with us, you're causing terrible damage. If you've opened your loving to God's love, you're helping people you don't know and have never seen. Is what I say true? Say yes, quickly, if you know, if you've known it from the beginning of the universe. My little friend is back and my joint is out, so maybe the smoke thing works. Where is he? I'm gonna spray the smoke like a sprinkler to keep him away from me. You don't want him near me, but I also don't want to swat and freak out because hornets and wasps can smell fear. So I want to remain very calm to keep him uninterested. The minute I start to freak out is the minute he zones in on me. And these little fuckers are mean. I got him. Got him right in the smoke. He keeps coming back. I can hear him more than I can see him. It is rather windy today, so we're gonna call an audible on this Puffs and Poetry. Finish smoking the joint and then read the poems because this is too good to let the wind smoke it. Also take a little drink. <coughs> it hits. I don't know if my mic's picking it up or not. Probably not. There are uh, gunshots going off far, far in the distance behind me. Not an uncommon sound at all in the South, uh, but it's been a couple days since I heard them. So of course they would start shooting on the day that I need to film. Not only does this honey banana refuel smell as good as it tastes, it actually tastes not just like weed, but like the terpenes in it. There he is. He's recruited friends now. Oh, jeez. All right, maybe we'll let that smoke out there to try to discourage the wasps. On to the poems, and to continue to ignore these wasps. <clears throat> this next poem is called These Spiritual Window Shoppers, and I've read this poem before, but it's one of my favorites of Rumi, and I like to include it whenever I read his work. These spiritual window shoppers who idly ask, how much is that? Oh, I'm just looking. They handle a hundred items and put them down, shadows with no capital. What is spent? Is love and two eyes wet with weeping but these walk into a shop and their whole lives pass suddenly in that moment in that shop where did you go nowhere 
What did you have to eat? Nothing much. Even if you don't know what you want, buy something to be part of the exchanging flow. Start a huge, foolish project like Noah. It makes absolutely no difference what people think of you. Oh, these wasps are freaking me out. All right, our next poem is actually the poem that gives this book its title. The title of this book is called The Soul is Here for Its Own Joy, and it's a collection of poetry from the past close to a thousand years edited together in a book. Um, the theme of the book is sacred poems from many cultures, so they're often about spirituality. This is called Someone Digging in the Ground. An eye is meant to see things. The soul is here for its own joy. A head has one use for loving a true love. Legs to run after. Love is for vanishing into the sky, the mind for learning what men have done and tried to do. Mysteries are not to be solved. The eye goes blind when it only wants to see why. A lover is always accused of something, but when he finds his love, whatever was lost in the looking comes back completely changed. On the way to Mecca, many dangers. Thieves, the blowing sand, only camel's milk to drink. Still, each pilgrim kisses the black stone there with pure, longing, feeling in the surface the taste of the lips he wants. This talk is like stamping new coin. They pile up while, while the real work is done outside by someone digging in the ground. Eesh, that wasp out close to me that time. <laughs> they aren't landing on me, so I'm, I'm okay. It's when they, when they land, Yesterday, a couple of them tried to burrow into my hair, which is very freaky. As long as they don't land on me, we'll be fine. If they land on me, there's going to be a technical interruption while I kill that thing. <sighs> Our last poem today is called Praising Manners. We should ask God to help us towards manners. Inner gifts do not find their way to creatures without just respect. If a man or woman flails about, he not only smashes his house, he burns the world down. Your depression is connected to your insolence and your refusal to praise. If a man or woman is on the path and refuses to praise, that man or woman steals from others every day, is in fact a shoplifter. The sun became full of light when it got hold of itself. Angels began shining when they achieved discipline. The sun goes out whenever the cloud of not praising comes near. The moment that foolish angel felt insolent, he heard the door close. We should ask God to help us towards manners and leave no trace. Some of these campsites that I stay at in the South are covered in years of trash and litter. And it's just appalling to me. <sighs> Once in West Virginia, I cleaned up what must have been at least 200 cigarette butts, just a carpet of cigarette butts over the campsite we were staying at. It is appalling to me the conditions that people will leave their environment in. manners towards each other, towards each other, and the environment. Manners to all your surroundings. And look at that, I don't even hear the wasps anymore. Maybe the poetry calmed them down. But those are all the poems that I have for you and for all of my friends in the woods today. Thank you for spending some time with me and some time with poetry. Until we talk again, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, 
and have a wonderful day.